Hey dudes, welcome back to Fims Presents RC on YouTube. And look at this little beauty. So apart from the body, which is a Di Tommaso uh, Pantera from uh, HPI Racing, underneath this rather beautiful body, you will find a Schumacher Fusion 21. Now these were released in about 2002 I believe, something like that, 2002. And the actual model themselves came with a free speed setup. I'll just show you that there. There's a free speed setup on there and that's an on the fly change auto gearbox there. So it's uh, RPM based, uh, spring settings, uh, spring system in the back. Uh, of each one of these is a little plate and a spring two spring settings so you can do um you can do some adjustments uh, by changing the springs in there that's mated to a thunder tiger pro 21 the legendary purple head 21 thunder tiger with the always leaky back plate uh, <laughs> these back plates always leaked it uh, didn't really affect the running of the engine actually to be honest with you but they always did drip a little bit of fuel them now this was picked up uh, from MSUK forum from a, a new member on there. I'm going to run this for a bit before I move it on. Uh, I've had quite a few of these now. I've had the R12, I've had a few Fusion 21s, I've had a Fusion 28 and obviously all the menaces and stuff like that. And I, I, every time they come up for sale, I just can't help myself. I do love my Schumachers, I really do. If anybody knows me, uh, they already know that I absolutely love my Schumacher. As you can see, someone's had quite a bit of fun putting the power down on this one. Uh, but that can be sorted. I'm going to get a little skin for, for this, I think, if I can find someone that can make me one. Or possibly cut my own from some vinyl. And you can tell this one has been stored for quite a while. As it's got a load of green gunk in there. And you can smell it, actually. It's got that typical old nitro fuel smell. Well, just the oil is left and all the nitro methane's burned off. So, um, what have we got here? We've got some alloy hop-ups that have been put on here. Uh, it's carbon composite top deck as standard. It's running the Ace RC and, um, from Funda Tiger and Futaba original servos there for the throttle and brake. We've got one of the best um, fail-safes here. A spring. So, best thing to use is a fail-safe on Nitro. Just use a spring. Uh, that needs a little tightening up. I can imagine that. But obviously, this is under. Uh, this is not powered at the moment. So, what I would do there is fit a new spring. But I have got a new spring. It did come with a bunch of spurs as well. So, capability-wise, I mean, what are these capable of? Speeds, um, not to sixty, less than three seconds. Uh, stiff breeze behind it. You could easily hit two and a half seconds, not to sixty and top end you're looking at about 80 80 plus you got the wind against you you're going to be in your mid 70s if the wind's behind you, you're going to be in the mid 80s so i think that's fast enough really for a 110 um because when that second gear kicks in and that torque really starts to scream and the, the engine gets on pipe if you will it's on pipe by the time it hits the second gear and wham you're away you really are away um, not that 0 to 60 in two and a half seconds wasn't fast enough, but a second gear from sort of like, um, I don't know, sort of 25 to sort of 50, 60 miles an hour is, is where it really starts to scream. Great on the long straights if you're racing them and stuff like that. They really are something else, these. If you ever have a chance to get one of these, do get yourself one. See that massive engine just sticking off that, um, sticking off the tiny little chassis there. So these are belt drive. If you don't know, these can be adjusted, these belts. So if you do get yourself um, a shoey, which I'm sure many of you will have had anyway, you can just see in there, there's a little silver piece. So I've only if I could point to it. A little silver piece down below where my finger is now, that little rectangle there. Um, that's the housing for the belt. And the underside of the belt runs in that little housing, which runs all the way along the bottom here. And then obviously you've got the top side of the belt. So these have got wide belts on here. You may have had cars like a HBI Sprint and stuff like that that have belts on there. This has got a really wide Kevlar belt, actually. I've just checked both the pulleys on either side and the teeth are nice and sharp and defined so although it has been run it hasn't been hammered i would go out on a limb to say this hasn't been raced because it's still 
got the original um, turnbuckles on here and when you, the, the racers they used to change these out for the titanium turnbuckles and the titanium um, rod ends here because the after I don't know sort of like 10 outings they will get quite loose I do know some people that used to change them after uh, every bloody race they would change the um, they would change the tie rods pulleys belts and everything because they're so monstrous on torque they literally can shred belts and pulleys in, in, in sort of one outing so out drives what have we got here we have got some of the first MIP blade key so these had MIPs on as standard all the way back in 2002 before MIP became sort of like uber popular with all the bashes. You see there you got a little blade key in there. So it's a normal out drive but it's on a, it's on a blade key and then obviously you've got UVD there, CVD there so I say. So um, what else radio wise we're on the old stick transmitter. Which is a Jaguar unit actually from um, ASRC Thunder Tiger, if you will. These are pretty decent actually. They're pretty robust. You can see this one's been um, put down and picked up on rough ground quite a lot. These are what, what we're we running here. Whoa, I know we're running. We're running a 27 millihertz crystal there, which is pretty cool. So there you go. Yes, yeah, it is made by Thunder Tiger. But what else came with it was this, which is quite interesting. Now you'll have to be really old to remember these ones. Uh, so this is back in the day was top spec. This this Sanwa. Um, obviously you can see it's been sat in someone's shed for quite a number of years but I bet you now if I put batteries in there I bet you that would still work you got your steering DR up there ultimate proportional efficiency how's about that you've even got a manual voltmeter in the middle so yeah that's a bit of retro fun that took me back that one I tell you um, yeah batteries front loaded in there and they've got a cage yeah, as usual these eat batteries like they all did back in the day I think these still take about 8 don't they yeah I can see by this size of that tray it's waiting to eat my AA batteries out the drawer which is kind of it so wheel wise we're actually sat on a HPI sort of hosier replicas yeah so the wider at the back than they are at the front and that's to accommodate this rather lovely, which is quite rare in itself actually, this um, HPI Pantera body here. I'll just get rid of that lovely pink aerial tube. There we go. I mean, look at that, it just looks right, doesn't it? It's got the vintage appeal, yeah, it's also got the power to back it up. So I will be restoring this over the next few days and I will be sort of... Um, running it and making sure that it's all sort of uh, set up and then I'm going to give it a proper good run on these um, non-foam tyres in here. So these are just basically rubber, uh, no foams inside there at all and the reason to do that is because um, these are great for show but I can feel they've got foams in there um, and they've not they've never been ran them so I can assume that this body has just been used for shelf purposes only if you will the original body which was on this one a BMW M3 did actually come with it as well so I may well use the original body uh, to run it on but obviously I don't want to destroy this back in the day these polycarbonate ones were quite thin um, even though it says super tough polycarbonate, it must be about 0.3 mil. 0. I think the standard now is about 0. 0.4 for axial, 0. 0.6 for the rest of the world. Um, these, I think, are about 0. 0.2, 0. 0.3, so they are really fragile. So, if especially um, now that they're not new, obviously, when they were new, they would have had a lot of flex and memory in the plastic, which is now gone. Um, as usual, your memory goes with age, doesn't it? Uh, and it's no different for sort of polycarbonate because this will sort of split into a shatter into a million pieces if I rolled this, which would be a crying shame because these are pretty rare bodies themselves. I do know that um, Mike DeFort and Alan Jensen think they can take me with a brushless car, um, which is pretty funny. I'm just waiting to see whether Mike's got that quarter mile long shelf so he can uh, run his night rage on there eh Mike what do you reckon <laughs> right anyway thanks for checking it out guys I really appreciate you tuning in on this glorious Thursday evening Fims out and I'll see you again next time for the running video cheers dudes